The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We're just going to wait a couple of minutes to uh, let other people join and get through the GoToWebinar software. So bear with us. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with us. Uh, welcome again to today's webinar from the Low Emission Development Strategies Global Partnership. Today's webinar is on shifting to sustainable transport systems, the LEDS GP Transport Working Group in 2018. We're very happy to welcome Angela Enriquez, who is the Transport Working Group Lead and um, Associate with the World Resources Institute Ross Center for Sustainable Cities, Laura Camilla Cruz from Sustana and Avantika Arjuna from ICLE, South Asia. So just a quick disclaimer, um, the notes there, we don't uh, endorse or recommend specific products and that the webinar will be recorded and uploaded to our website within one week of the webinar. Uh, there are two options for listening. You can listen through your computer by selecting the mic and speakers radio button on the right hand audio pane display, or you can listen by telephone by selecting the telephone option. Please remember to keep your audio device muted throughout the webinar and please do ask questions throughout the webinar as well by using the chat box in the control panel of the webinar. These will be moderated for the end of the webinar and we'll have a Q&A to discuss the webinar. If you have any technical dif difficulties, please contact the number on this slide. Thanks very much and enjoy the webinar. Angela, over to you. Thanks, Charlie. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar. Um, I'm Angela Enriquez, and I am the lead of the LEDGE Transport Working Group. So today in front of you, we'll, you'll see the agenda. Um, I will do an introduction of the LEDGE GP and our work um, and the plans that we have for the coming year in terms of trainings and outreach. And then um, I will have my colleagues talk about our plans for the communities of practice in the uh, Latin American, Caribbean, and Asia regions. And then at the end of the webinar, I will do a quick training on how to use our LEDGE Transport Toolkit. So just quickly to answer the question, 
why focus on transport? Currently, transport is 23% of global emissions and ex only expected to continue to grow. Um, and in terms of the nationally determined contributions and country commitments, 75% of NDCs do mention transport as a mitigation source. So it is, it, it is some, a sector that many countries have identified as a priority for them. And just wanted to show in terms of where we are and where we need to be, um, the figure to the right shows the growth of transport emissions um, expected. So the red line is the IEA's reference technology scenario. And essentially this is the baseline for energy and climate commitments. So es essentially the NDCs. And it shows that even with these types of commitments, transport is expected to grow. Um, and if you look toward the 2060, 2060 um, mark, essentially that's where transport is supposed to be in order to meet the two degree scenario. So to meet the two degree scenario, targets and ambitions for the transport sector needs to increase. Um, and so again, this is only to meet the two degree scenario, so not even the 1.5 degree scenario with of the Paris uh, commitments, of the Paris Agreement. So the, we have a lot of work in front of us, and uh, that's where the Ledge Transport Working Group comes in. So the Ledge Transport Working Group uh, provides trainings, technical support, and tools to support low emission development in the transport sector. And the leaders of the working group are the WRI Ross Center for Sustainable Cities, um, NREL, which is the U.S. National Renewable Energy Laboratory, UN Environment, ICLEI, and Lebelula. And here we have sort of a holistic approach. At the global level, this is where we provide tools, such as our Ledge Transport Toolkit. We do webinars, and we also participate in global events, um, such as the Leds Global Event. Where we also represent ourselves at COP, and big events like that. In terms of our regional approach, we work with the Ledge GP regional platforms to host workshops that are designed for the specific needs of the regions. At the local level, um, we do provide some deep dive in country support where we design support to address specific topics of countries that have very specific requests. Um, and then I also just wanted to quickly highlight that we do have what's called the remote expert assistance on LEDs. And again, this is more targeted approach. Um, it's sort of what we consider a light touch and it's 40 hours of expert assistance. So for example, if you would like an expert to review a transport plan that you have pending, um, this is something that we can do. So I just wanted to give a quick overview of what the LEDs GP is and who is part of the LEDs GP. So the LEDs GP is coordinated by a global secretariat that co coordinates all of our work. And then we have here the regional platforms, which is in Latin America and the Caribbean, Europe and Eurasia, Asia and Africa. And here the regional platforms are really the on the ground representation and they work with countries to identify the needs um, for, for the region. And then we have the working groups, such as transport, subnational integration, benefits, AFALU, finance, and energy. And with the working groups, we coordinate and provide assistance to give trainings in response to these regional priorities. In the transport working group, we have regional partners. So in LAC, we have Sutentar, and then in Asia, we have ICLE. Um, and these partners are also transport experts who we work with to design these support efforts. I just wanted to give a quick 
um, overview of the framework that we use. This framework is used, the Avoid Shift Improve framework is used by transport experts as a holistic approach to mitigating emissions from the transport sector. Um, and here we focus on avoiding travel, avoiding trips through, for example, better urban design, shifting people out of their cars into public transport or non-motorized forms of transportation, such as biking, walking, and also improving technologies. And I think this is probably what the hot topic is right now, um, and focusing on improving fuels, improving vehicle efficiency, electrification. And then also <clears throat> below you'll see just examples of policy measures and instruments that, that we use um, to achieve the reduction of carbon emissions from transport systems. So the LED GP Transport Working Group um, provides this assistance at no cost to its members. So again, just examples of how, of the type of assistance we provide through peer learning and knowledge sharing, um, we'll touch a little bit on the communities of practice that we're establishing in the Asia and LAC regions. Um, we'll touch on the Ledge Transport Toolkit, which is a tool that we've designed for our members, and then um, provide some examples of our technical assistance. So I'm just quickly going to touch on some examples that the Ledge Transport Working Group has done in the past. <clears throat> so an example of a regional peer exchange is uh, something we did in Vietnam uh, last December, and this was in partnership with GIZ and APEC. And here we, we identify that there were capacity building needs and to focusing on the operational and energy efficiency of bus systems. And there was a regional exchange with countries from the Philippines, Vietnam, Thailand, Papua New Guinea, and Mexico. And our approach is that we want our members not only to learn from experts, but also to learn from each other. So we give them space to um, share their experiences, ask, their questions um, and we always have some activities so that they can it's more interactive another example of a regional training that we had was back in the philippines uh, we worked with un environment cleaner asia um, and our local partner there was the De Fil the philippines department of environment and natural resources um, and this was during the time that they were adopting Euro 4 um, fuel quality standards. And so we worked with UN Environment and Clean Air Asia to, to have this type of training. And the training uh, consisted of a webinar series that was hosted prior to the workshop to prepare participants um, and provide information to the region about the topic and to prepare the, like I said, the participants for the upcoming workshop. And here's just a quick snapshot of the type of topics that we covered um, ahead of hosting the workshop. <clears throat> and so I wanted to touch on an example of some deep dive support that we provided for Peru where we worked with Peru on the ground to, to lay the foundation for a streamlined approach to climate change mitigation in the transport sector. And again, we worked with, with partners that were already working in Peru, such as GIZ and the uh, United States Environmental Protection Agency. Um, and we coordinated with them to have workshops that we provided for Peru and brought in experts, not only international experts, but local regional experts to share their experiences. And we also had weekly calls <clears throat> through remote expert assistance to, to support uh, the Ministry of Transport to make sure that you know they're on track to meeting the objective of the project. 
and just to highlight that this is a little bit different from our regional trainings because this is more extended support to meet a larger objective for a specific country. And as a result of <clears throat> excuse me, our efforts, transport was included into the National Climate Change Action Plan of Peru, which was essentially the foundation for their NDCs. Um, the Peruvian NAMA, transport NAMA that was being prepared by GIZ um, with our support as well was accepted into the NAMA facility. And then with the efforts that we had with the US EPA, we were able to influence the first law addressing climate change for the country. And essentially what this law stated was that ministries need to start to track their emissions. And, and finally, um, the Ministry of Transport in Peru formed an internal climate change working group that also included stakeholders from the various ministries. So this wasn't just an internal group within the Ministry of Transport, but this was an internal climate change working group that included other stakeholders that, that had some influence on the sector. And then just another example of some um, local support, which again, we provide some services through the real service, which is the remote expert assistance on LEDs. Um, we had a request from the South Sudan's Ministry of Transport. And essentially, what they were asking was they wanted to know how countries have made transport a priority within their national agenda. And what we did for them is we gave them a list of cases and they asked us to build up on two specifically, so Uganda and Bhutan. And I believe those case studies were actually just recently published on our website. Um, and then to give them more of a background on how the national government developed their policies in those countries, which stakeholders were involved, um, and what partners were involved in implementing the policy. And also, the another activity was to try to set up a call between Bhutan and South Sudan so they could exchange ideas and ask their questions on, on how they were able to accomplish this. So again, just a different example of how uh, countries have used the real service. So one of the tools that I wanted to quickly touch on is this tool that is developed by the LEDGP in partnership with several other organizations which is the Leadership Explorer database. And it's a platform to catalyze peer learning by showcasing cases of LEDs leadership and innovation. And so essentially this is a collection of case studies um, from, from champions. Um, and so again, if it, there's some information here, if you wanted to, have any of your case studies included in the Explorer, please let us know. But this is another tool that's accessible to our members. So for 2018, I just wanted to quickly cover our work plan. Um, the LED Transport Working Group is working this year specifically on an overarching topic, which is to support the design and implementation of national and subnational urban transport actions to align with NDCs. And we have two work streams, one focusing on climate change actions for transport and another focusing on transitioning to clean mobility. And the subtopics below are examples of topics that um, could be covered within our training efforts. And this slide just shows a snapshot of the planned activities that we have for the year. As you see, most of our efforts are focused on Latin America and Asia regions. And this is 
because uh, these regions through the regional platforms have identified transport as a priority. Um, and so for these regions, we were working with the regional platforms and also with our local technical experts on establishing communities of practice. So the communities of practice have been designed with the regional platforms um, to focus specifically on what the needs of the region are. And so for LAC, it's going to focus on electric mobility, specifically on addressing financial market-related and technology transfer-related barriers to implement electric mobility in the region. And in, in Asia, the focus more is transitioning to clean mobility. So not necessarily specifically just limited to electric mobility, um, it's focusing on clean mobility action. So designing and implementing low carbon urban transport actions oriented towards strengthening clean public transport planning and policy initiatives. So I wanted to introduce uh, my colleague Lara Cruz from Susentar to talk a little bit about the community of practice that we are having in LAC. Thanks, Angela. Hello to everyone. Thanks for joining. As Angela mentioned, I will be leading this COP um, in Latin America. Next. Um, this COP is intended to address the main barriers to electric mobility in the LAC region. And for doing so, we are aiming to have actors from different types of institutions instead of having only representatives from national governments in order to have, uh, for instance, the um, point of view of the private sector uh, or the academia. Next. Um, what, what we are offering um, to these COP members is uh, first um, stakeholder mapping, which will help to easily understand the state of the art in the LAC region in terms of electric mobility. Um, it will help to understand who are the early movers, which countries are facing more barriers, uh, who found out an interesting way out to these barriers, and uh, which countries could work together among others. In second place, we are offering a variety of training and peer exchange sessions based on the stakeholder mapping. Um, so we will have a series of online peer exchange sessions to bring together the early movers and the countries interested in electric transportation, but that are still facing a number of barriers. Uh, the key findings of this, uh, these activities will be shared with an extended audience with, uh, through open webinars. Um, you can all join and uh, we are also having uh, regional workshops for the members of the COP so they can talk to each other in person and um, so it will be more dynamic. We are also having real assistance, as Angela mentioned, for the early movers identified in this process. And we are also aiming to collaborate in regional events related to transport um, and electric transport in the region. Next. Next, okay, thanks. As you can see in the timetable, we are planning activities for one year or so, um, initially. Uh, we are starting with a webinar in May the 2nd. Uh, you can all join to this webinar. If you are interested in joining the community of practice, you will have my contact details at the end of the PowerPoint. Um, 
we are also planning activities uh, monthly, as you can see. So we can we don't take all the time of the COP members because we know they are very busy. Uh, and um, next, I'm just um, I just want to highlight we are having a couple of case studies, so we can also include in the in the database. Um, in the database uh, Angela mentioned. And um, the, the idea is uh, whether you are in the community of practice or not, you will be able to access to these documents so you can implement the learnings and the key findings in your region. Next. Um, now I'm going to give way to Avantika from iClay South Asia, who is leading the Let's Asia community of practice on clean mobility. Thanks. Thank you, Laura. Hi, this is Avante Arjuna. I'm from ICLE South Asia. As uh, Angela already mentioned, we are transport partners for this program in Asian countries. Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? Angela, can you move to the next slide, please? Yeah, as we all know, transport being one of the significant sectors uh, for infra infrastructure development. So it is one of the sectors which caters to uh, our day to day travel needs, be it through pu public transport, IPT or our personal vehicles. And we also know that the need of the R is that clean mobility has to be addressed. So this COP, the, this community of practice for the Asian countries, which we are doing is that we are trying to address the clean mobility and resilience in transport sector which has also been identified as one of the major priority sectors for Asian transport region. And in this, uh, through this COP, we'll try to bring, bring in expert reviews and advice to address the shortcomings and requirements of low emission development strategies and implementation of the effective policies, which will also include peer-to-peer -peer collaborations and would facilitate the above actions. And uh, through this COP, uh, the participants who all can join our national and we, we are reaching out to national and subnational governments, the technical institutions, regulators, system operators, and business businesses, nonprofit and other international organizations who address the real time policy. And this would also include a focus on transport sector experts from ADB, GIZ, CAI, and all the expert members. And uh, it would also have export facilitators from LEDS, Global Partnership and Transport Working Groups, along with Asia LEDS Partnership. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the offerings which would uh, happen under this COP would include continuous engagement and interactions with decision makers of all the countries which have clean mobility as their priority topic. And this would also offer a platform to participate in online seminars, which we'll be having. And then we'll also have personal uh, meetings, seminars, training programs on clean mobility and its related avenues, such as clean fuel alternatives, electric PT fleets, and improvement of their operational efficiencies. And all the COP members who would join this would be benefited from the participation in online and in in-person exchange meetings through seminars, trainings, and also with peers working on efficient and cleaner mobilities, which would include focus on topics such as clean fuels, electric mobility technology, supporting infrastructure creation, policy and regulatory framework, uh, which would also include private sector involvement and also institutional framework. Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? Uh, we've also planned out few performance goals for this year. It would include at least two countries would have documented improvements in the policies, analytics, and planning approaches in transport sector, followed by 12 core participants who would have identified enhancements in knowledge and technical and analytical capacity. And we would also document one success story on the impacts of the ALP and develop it, and another case study on the deep dive support to early mover country, which has been developed and at least one issue brief on the learning from COP, which has been developed, which would be developed. Uh, next slide, please. 
For this, we have anticipated few activity flows. First one includes floating of the EOI to recruit member participants, which is uh, we are now targeting it. And for this, we've already uh, trying to reach out people in different Asian countries. Then after that, this will be followed by constituting Asia led scope by next month, probably. And then we'll select two front runner member countries for deep engagement. That would be done by July this year. And after that, and uh, even from April this, uh, this year only, we'd initiate three online focused discussions, seminars, and trainings. And this would be initiated, we'll have three of them, which would be done from April to December this year, and then develop and share one issue brief and case study by September. And then also, which would this would be followed by deep dive engagement and proposal for high value, high impact quick wins by next year, and also country specific technical assistance and hand holding support to early to mover countries. And in addition to this, we'll also be having in person workshops, uh, two in person workshops in this year only. Uh, I think with this, I'll hand over to Angela. Thank you, Avantika. Um, and Laura for going over the activities that we have planned for the two regions. Um, and I think moving on to the next point in our agenda, I just wanted to give the audience um, an introduction on how to use our Ledge Transport Toolkit. So I think I go um, I'll go ahead and just open it here so that everyone can see. So this is our Ledge Transport Toolkit that we developed and, and relaunched last year. We, we relaunched an update last year. And it's a toolkit that provides our members with resources, uh, targeted resources for their specific types of questions. Um, so this is, this is the first page that showcases the different types of key actions, policy strategies, and types of media, but I'll come back to that. I'm going to show the different tabs first. So this tab are the key actions of a project cycle, and each of the key actions has a, has a short definition to them. Um, and if you wanted to learn more about each of them, you can simply click on the different ones or you can click on next action to learn about what these key actions are. And if these specifically are of interest to you, you can actually just click on you want to see all of the tools that are related to implementation and monitoring. You can just click there on view related tools and it'll show you all of the tools that we have within our toolkit that are related to that a specific type of key action. And then if you want to just clear this, you can just either X that out or simply press reset. So that, that's the key actions tab. And similarly, we have the strategies tab. And again, this is the avoid shift and improve framework that I discussed earlier. Um, and it's the same situation if, you know, you want to focus only on, on avoid types of strategies such as urban planning, land use, um, transport demand management policies, you can click on um, view the related tools and all of the tools that we've identified that align with this strategy will, will show up. And then just quickly on the policy page, so this page uh, simply shows the different definitions of what we dis, dis, um, uh, decided were different types of policy instruments. So again, this links to that framework that I had shown earlier that shows the different types of policy instruments that are related to the avoid, shift, and improve framework. So here, these are simply just uh, the definitions that we've provided. And I will go back onto this tools page to show everyone how to use this. Okay. Um, so let's reset to make sure. Okay. Um, 
So again, you already have the definitions of your key actions, of the strategies, of the different types of policies. Um, and so once you're already comfortable with with that and, and you decide, okay, I want to make uh, this search a little bit more specific, um, you can click on, for example, let's look at assessing opportunities uh, under the avoid strategy. And we know that avoid has more to do with, for example, land use planning. So I, I want to look at all of the resources that are related to these topics and just click apply and here you'll see the different types of tools that we have that are related to all of this so just to give an example and then um, so then we can just click on this um, we have for for each of the tools, just a brief overview of what the tool is about. And then once you click on that, it should bring you straight over to that resource. And so that's an example of how to use that search option. And again, once you're, once you're done looking at those, you can click over here and either unclick them individually or I think hitting reset is probably the best option. And then you can also search by country. For example, let's type in China and hit apply. A lot of these resources are also applicable um, to a global audience. So for example, if you do type in China, uh, but a resource has either mentioned China or is part of a more global landscape, those might show up. So it won't, might not be as specific um, as, only shine, as only showing China-related resources. So again, here's just an example of the output of that search. And then once you're done, you can just click again and to start over, just click reset or um, hit the X mark. And that is a qu very quick overview on how to use the LEDs uh, transport toolkit. And I guess now, um, now we'll, we'll be taking questions. So I think we have some questions in the box. Let me, me one second. Um, sorry. Okay, um, the first question we have, um, and I think either of, either Laura or Aventika, you could answer. The first question is, how do members of the community of practice communicate with each other? Do you use a specific online platform for the communities of practice? So yeah, I guess we'll have Laura and Aventika answer that because the different regions will have different approaches. Um, so I don't know, Laura, maybe if you wanna go first. Thanks, Angela. Uh, for the community of practice in Latin America, we are using the Let's Lab platform. We um, have a similar platform to go to webinars and go to meetings. So um, we have the mailing list of the members and we program the meetings on go to webinars and they can talk to each other um, through this platform. Great. And then it's also connected to the question um, from Nicola. Can you explain more about how the moderated sessions of the community practice are done?
So I think I can answer. Um, these sessions will will be done both online, um, as Laura and Aventika have touched on. Will be both online, and then we'll also have um, some in-person wor workshops for the members of the community of practice. Um, Aventika, I don't know if you have any other inputs from the Asia region and how a the ALP will approach the community of practice. Yeah, uh, Angela, the, we would also we also aim to approach the COP through online meetings, the discussions, the webinars, and one-to-one -one personal meetings, as we've already have already mentioned, and we'll also be having workshops. So that would uh, give a platform to all the members to participate and discuss amongst each other. Okay, thank you. Um, and I guess touching also on the community of practice. Um, I get, because LAC and Asia have different approaches on how the membership for the community of practice will um, be sorted. I guess, Aventika, can you, can you touch on how, um, how the members of the community of practice will be uh, decided yeah. on? Yeah, uh, Angela, we have, uh, like for all the Asian countries, we have now started reaching to them. And we are reaching the national governments, all the people who can be, who can give inputs to us, technical institutions, as I already mentioned. We are reaching out to them to nominate the people. And from there, we'll be happy. Then after that, we'll, after we hear the nominations from them, then we'll be floating an EOI. On the basis of that, we'll be selecting them. Okay, great. And then, Laura, can you explain the approach of choosing the members for the community of practice in the uh, LAC region? Region, please. We are choosing the community, the, the members of the community of practice, based on the on the mapping exercise uh, of ex, of stakeholders, and we are also designing a survey. Uh, we are emailing to all the potential members, and based on the answers we will selecting a small group of people who will be invited to be members of the community of practice. But however, if you are interested, you can email me. Um, you will have my contact details already um, in the presentation. Great, thank you. Um, and then we have two comments from the Africa region, uh, Erica and Lawrence, I see your questions. Uh, the so the community of practice essentially is open. The question is, is it open to, to Africa? Um, it, our webinars um, are very much open to our global audience. The community of practice uh, is decided upon through, like Laura and Aventika said, uh, through invitations and and through the level of interest of the different countries. Um, unfortunately for this year, Africa is not a prior, a, a transport wasn't identified in the Africa region as a priority sector. However, you know, if, if you are very much interested, we can work to coordinate to identify how we can engage with you more um, to be involved in the community of practice in, in the different regions. So please, um, Lawrence, I see that you sent in your email. <clears throat> Erica, if you're interested, please feel free to email me um, and then we can touch base on and discuss more about that. Um, is there anyone else that has any questions uh, for us on, for example, how to use the toolkit, more information on the community of practice or, or the approach of the LEDGE GP Transport Working Group? Okay, um, well, again, if you have any questions, <clears throat> excuse me, feel free to send any of us an email uh, toward the end of this webinar. Uh, you'll have the our contact information. Actually, um, here you can find the links to, to the Lead GP Transport Working Group website, as well as the transport toolkits. Um, 
and then just the contact information. So there's a general LegGP transport email, and then here are our individual emails in case you had any very specific questions on anything that we touched on um, here today. And I think, and just in general, if if you have not already joined the LegGP, please join us by clicking on the link shown um, so that we, you can be one of our members and um, leverage some of the offerings that we have for our members. And I guess with that, um, I'll hand it over to Charlie as we have a quick poll for the audience to answer. Thanks very much for joining everyone. Uh, that's the end of the webinar. I just want a reminder that uh, the webinar will be online on ledcp.org within the next week. Have a nice afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you.